All right, everybody. Um, here's the test setup that I did last night. I'll run it through, give you a visual. Um, the test takes way too long to uh, perform for everybody to see, so that's just not going to be an option. So if you, this is a shortened version of it. I'm um, will start off with I had this bottle completely filled last night, and I'm checking the system for leaks. And over a 24-hour period, or actually closer to 18 hours. Um, it looks like it has a slight leak. You can see the bottom of the bottle there and the water level there. Um, so the system has a slight leak, but it's small enough that during production, I feel it's pretty insignificant. So I'm not going to calculate that or try and fix it. I'm just going to run with it. Um, to explain the parts of the system, what we have on this is a two-part system. It's a fluid gas separator over here and a bubbler here. I'm not using the bubbler right now. I've explained the setup before, but right now I'm not using the bubbler. I'm just pulling the uh, measurement gas off of the uh, fluid gas separator. Um, its nominal level is right about there, which puts it in respect to the cell, oh, right about at the top. So that's what we got on that side. You can see some fluid right there, push that back in the cell. Uh, let's see, we'll walk you through the cell, the connections that I got. Right now I'm just doing the two end plate taps. Um, it's a 19 plate configuration. Uh, has 18 spaces on it. It's pretty much cut and dry, just a series stack, dry cell. This meter right here is reading amperage or voltage. You can see it does have a slight charge, 0.3 volts. Um, my polarity is correct to the color. So this goes up on the positive side. This goes up on the negative side. I'm trying to keep it simple so everybody can understand and be able to see it very easily. Um, here's my connection to my power supply. Comes over. <clears throat> to my amperage multimeter <clears throat> and then obviously I can't go two reds on goes off and hits the cell the power supply does have amps and volts on it but it's just not accurate enough for my liking um, some of these tests are very low amperage so you know 1.2 amps off of the uh, power supply it could be 1.21 1.29 anywhere in between so I like to be a little bit more accurate than just slam it on there and go and go off of those uh, two numbers. The reason being it only goes to one decimal point so and you can see the voltage on that isn't quite accurate so if I change this down let's see what it really is. Yeah see that's 0.37 it's reading between 0.3 and 0.4 it jumps around so I, I don't really like the uh, multimeter or the power supply's volt and amperage readings. Okay, I'm going to turn this back up to the 200 scale and uh, we'll give it a go at, at the highest rates of production or a couple different ones just so you guys can take a look at it. So let's start cranking it up. Try and stabilize the picture. interesting. It looks like we don't have a connection somewhere. Oh. Duh. No. Yeah. Swap the leads. That might help, you know. There. <laughs> That'll work a little bit better. Alright, let's crank it up. It should start drawing at about high 20s. Okay, it starts drawing, then it'll drop back down. Start drawing, drop back down, start drawing, drop back down. From there on out, it'll pretty much draw continuously. So, let's get it up to about 37. And if you look ever so carefully, you can see that the 
measurement bottle is moving. It's not putting out very much because it's only drawn 0.85 amps. So let's get to the interesting part. Let's crank it up. Okay, now that's full tilt on the voltage off that supply. 51 volts. It's drawn three and some change. You can now start to see some action coming out of the cell. Okay. Um, one interesting thing to note is let me get this out of the way. If you watch the bubbles on the port side, they'll kind of bounce back and forth. Now they're floating up. But you can see that there isn't uh, much back pressure. If the bubble gets too big, it'll float up, but the small bubbles stay right about there and they just kind of go back and forth. They don't move too much. Um, I like that feature on this fluid gas separator. It positively pressurizes this upper portion of the chamber, which pushes the water down and back out. Um, it probably doesn't give the, the same benefits as pumping, but it's pretty good. And for a, a passive system like this, it's it's I like to start off with a baseline of what it does without any aid. So you can now see the action coming off. Let's flip that to where you can see it coming on this side. So it's not too bad. We can run a quick test at this level because it doesn't take too long. We've got seven minutes on it. Up slightly. All right, so it's pretty much bottomed off. Uh, this will be tricky. I'll just hold it with my thumb. So you see the bottle going up. You see in the background the fluid getting pushed. Approaching halfway. Total exact volume of this is 522 milliliters. With the airspace at the top, when I let it go down, it's about 515 milliliters, plus or minus one or two. Um, that's a close enough number for my data. And close to the finish. And there it is. So if you want to time it and figure it out, that's cool. But here's the data. Yeah, I know, it's not exactly legible, but it's my notes. Here's my efficiencies. Um, it starts off at 39 volts, and you can see I graduate all the way up to 51 volts. And the peak efficiency on this particular setup is uh, right at that 4.2 uh, 4.429 mark, and then it kind of drops off from there. So that's it. The reason for this test 